first example we're going to solve together is a motor start sequence. In this example, we have two discrete inputs, the start and the stop, and the program we are going to build is going to enable us to use these two inputs to control these three outputs, oil motor, main motor, and auxiliary motor, in a manner that's illustrated in these five requirements. So let's see these requirements one at a time. Requirement number one, oil motor has to start once start, which is a normally open momentary switch, is pressed. Simple, discrete, input-output requirement. Requirement number two, once start is released, oil motor has to remain on. Again, we have done this requirement before. It's simply a latching requirement. Requirement number three, 10 seconds after oil motor is on, main motor has to start. In other words, the only condition that will trigger the main motor to start is a time delay of a value of 10 seconds. Requirement number four is a similar requirement. It's a five second timer delay that's going to trigger or start the auxiliary motor. Finally, the requirement number five, anytime the stop, which is a normally closed momentary switch is pressed, any running motor of these motors, oil motor, main motor, or auxiliary motor will be de-energized. In this example, we have a mixture of discrete IOs and timer requirements. So we have done discrete IOs before. We're going to follow the same logic we have done before. Now, regarding the ri timer requirements, there are two things that we need to consider before we start building our solution. Number one is the number of timers. Number two is the timer's type. So for the number of timers needed to uh, solve this problem, simply we have to look at how many timer delay requirements that we have. In this example, we have 10 seconds delay, and then we have a five second delay. Now, all what we are looking for in, the, in this requirement is simply a time unit. It could be seconds, minutes, hours, days, whatever, as long as it's a, it's a time unit at the end of the day. Now, since we have two timer delay requirements, this is an indicator that we need to use two timers to fulfill uh, these timer requirements. Now, please remember, we are just starting with the timers. As we progress more, uh, we, once we uh, introduce the comparison instructions, uh, this analysis will be different. We can actually implement the solution with simply one timer, but for the time being, since we have not covered the comparison instructions yet, we need two timers, one timer with a preset value of 10 seconds, other timer with a preset value of five seconds. The second concept is the types of the timers that we need to use. So we have covered three types of timers in Alan Bradley, TON, which is a non-retentive timer, TF, which is off-delay timer, and an RTO, which is a retentive timer. The question is, which one of these timers is best suitable to implement the solution above? Now, remember, technically you can use any timer to fulfill any requirement. However, remember this, it's always depending on the requirement that you are building and the program that you want to achieve, it would be easier to go with one of these timers, depending on the requirements. Now, as for this example, if since we do not see any requirement that talks about retaining or maintaining the value of the accumulator uh, after we hit the stop, it means the retentive timer should not be used over here. Could be, but should it, there should be an easier way. Similarly, there is no other requirement that shows us if we want an output to remain on after a stop is pressed. So the TOF is not the way to go over here. That's why it's easier to build the solution using timer on delay, the non-retentive timer. Now, what we will do, I'm going to demonstrate the solution step by step, how to use the TON to fulfill these five requirements. And at the end, I'm going to show you just a screenshot, how can we, a uh, different solution using RTO. So remember, it's your call at the end of the day to go with which timer, you can go with TON or RTO or even TOF. However, always, always, there is, it's easier to go with one of these timers depending on the requirement that you are solving. Let's go ahead and see how RS Logix works using the TON. The RS Logix implementation, step number one requires creating the tags. I have already, to save some time, I've created tags start, stop, and the three motors. As you can see, all of these are booleans. And since we agree that we are going to require two timers to implement the solution, that's T1, T2, and both these have data type at timers. Let's go ahead and start the first rung. So the first rung, we're going to have an XIC referring to start. And this is going to trigger an OTE for the first motor, which is the oil motor. 
and remember there's a start as a momentary switch so we are going to require latching requirement which is another xic instruction referring to oil motor that's going to bypass the start once the start is released that's my on section of this rung we also need the only condition which is the stop that's an xic referring stop i'm moving a little bit fast with these instructions because we have done them before so we have done this example right now the second requirement it says or third requirement in that problem it says 10 seconds after oil motor is on we need the main motor to start in other words together with the oil motor we need to start a second uh, the timer so the timer we insert from the timer tab insert t and because we agreed we are going to with the non-retentive timer the, the timer name is t1 the preset value in that requirement is 10 seconds so 10,000 milliseconds and the first rung is done right now and the second rung what we are going to do we are going to make use of the done bit of the timer to start the main motor so start trigger the, the oil motor with the timer 10 seconds later the main motor will be on but there is one more requirement which is a, a five second delay after the main motor is on so similar to the first rung i'm going to create a branch parallel to the main motor i'm going to have the timer timer two so timer two and this one will have a preset value of five seconds and i can make it equal to zero the la I'll, i like to use to copy and paste a lot so control c and v and then the third uh, the last rung we are going to have the timer two done bit so i need to fix it over here please watch out when you're doing copy and pasting you might just keep the keep the same input on the the, the pasted rungs the done bit will trigger the last motor which is the auxiliary motor so that's our program right now start stop are responsible to the to start and stop the oil motor and t1 One, after 10 seconds both main motor and t2 is on and after five seconds of main motor being on the auxiliary will start let's download this program and see if, if this solution actually fulfills the requirement that we have uh, to we have to consider so no errors that's a good thing let's show right now the start is normally open that's why you can see to the left side of the screen it's reading zero into the plc memory you press that switch it changes to one even when you let go the latching take care of the uh, maintaining the path so oil motor is on timer is on for 10 seconds 10 seconds later the dumb bit is set the main motor is on second timer is on for five seconds this guy is on the auxiliary is five seconds after this one and main motor is 10 seconds after oil motor anytime you decide to hit the stop remember the stop is a normally closed switch that's why to the left side of the screen you see it's reading one into the plc memory you press that switch it will be open the xic instruction this one changes to false it breaks the rung and literally everything goes to zero one more time you let go for the stop sorry but it's okay it goes back to the closed state xic goes back to true one more time if you change you hit the start right now in the middle of uh, right now it's still running if you decide at that point that you want to hit the stop it will stop everything right away so that's the solution using TN. and right now i showed you how to build this one using the proper library tabs for all xics xios and these timers and i'm going to just to show you a screenshot of how can you build a similar solution for the same requirements using TN. And remember, at the end of the day, there is no one correct way in programming. There are infinite ways to be for your solutions. It all depends on your personal preference. Let's see how the, the RTO requires the solution for this one.